Oh, active development. I bet it's here. Yep, this is a bit Tuesday, huh? All right. All right, all right, all right. So here's the patch notes. All right, the following content reflects a, pa uh, a testing patch currently active on the test shard. All testing patches, with all testing patches, all of the content listed below are subject to change and may or may not end up uh, making it in the live uh, server or may be adjusted in some fashion. Players should be civil with their feedback. Oh, <laughs> you're opening up for a fucking pitch right here. Uh, and should not change the behavior of the live server on any of their proposed changes, as this is no guarantee in uh, each and every one of these things uh, are yet official. Players can PM me at Luthius, uh, Outlands underscore Luthius on Discord with any feedback or concerns, or reply directly to the forum post below. All right, spawn rates. Response for all dungeons are now 25% faster. Respawns for all NPC ships are now 25% faster. This is a huge quality of life change. I have been stating time and time again that, like, I personally feel, especially if those weekend warriors come on, dude, those dungeons that the, you are farming against the players for the mobs. There's, it, it never felt dangerous. You know, it, it never felt very dangerous in a dungeon on the weekend. Uh, unless you're fighting in, like, some stupid mobs, right? You know, the ones that just have, like, weird-ass mechanics. But, like, it it did always feel kind of like... Especially Aegis. Aegis always felt a little lackluster on the weekends. And I understand Aegis is a newer dungeon. But I have been playing kind of a Dexer... A Dexer Tamer build for fun. It was not the most insane build, but it was it was a functional build. Uh, faster respawn weekly bonuses... Faster respawn weekly server bonuses. The 15% special loot chance uh, weekly server-wide bonus for a dungeon will be replaced with the faster respawn bonus. So, all dungeons will be 25% faster. And then on top of that, I wonder if that, if that 25 and then that other 25 is additive. I wonder if it's additive or if it's like 25% increase of 25%, which would probably be like... 30%? If it, if they're multiplicative versus additive, you know what I mean? But yeah, that... that still. Still. The, uh, that, that, that will be a fun weekend for farming right there. Especially the uh, AoE boys. Um... Faster, bo uh, faster respawn bonuses for dungeon or wilderness increase the spawn rates of creatures in the region by 25%, as listed here. Uh, sanctuary dungeons. Concept. During the Friday night reset, uh, each week one of the core dungeons will randomly be selected as a sanctuary dungeon for the next week. The dungeon will become protected dungeon where players cannot commit crimes. So it's kind of like introducing a little bit of Tremel, but rotating. As a trade-off, loot drops and experience earned in Sanctuary will be reduced. Does it say by how much? It used to. Because that's about as far as I got on the Pones video, and I decided to stop watching it so I could kind of talk about it on stream. They may have, re they may have removed the uh, how much it, uh, it says under mechanics. Ah, will be reduced to 50% of normal. Gold value of creatures in dungeons and resulting loot and experience. So... This is what I wanted to talk about because I think this is where I am going to disagree with Pwn Star on this one. Uh, and, and not out of controversy because I, I do respect the opinion. Because uh, I think he was... Po I, I, if I, and I could be wrong. I didn't watch this whole video. So I, if, I, if I'm wrong, I, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm in a mistake. But I think I, I, I remember from what I watched when I first woke up this morning. <laughs> That's what I did. Um... 
I remember him overall liking this. And where I'm going to slightly deviate from this is I like the idea of this dungeon. Um, I'm okay with killing an 800 gold monster for 400 gold at zero risk. What I would like to see changed is the experience, or at least even if it's, even if it's not affected here, uh, but at least called out in the notes just to allow a conversation around it. Because this is something I've wanted in the game for a long time, and I think this is a good opportunity to have talk about this. I would love to see this dungeon give bonus experience, more than normal experience. I'm talking like two times the experience of skill gains. I would love to see this this dungeon as the weekly be an extension of of the island, but for more experienced players. So if I want to go work up swords and I can handle like a level one or a level two dungeon with fifty sword skills or seventy well technically like seventy or eight seventy five score uh seventy score uh, swords, eighty swords, right? Then let me go here and finish it to a hundred, right? I would love to see that kind of a mechanic because like then it encourages like the, the, the earlier dungeons to, to for farming and, and hunting the, the level one dungeons. That's where new players could go because they don't have to worry about reds. Level one and level two dungeons would be very active for new players. Also, this would be the ideal dungeon. And I honestly think, this may be a fun take, an interesting take, or a hot take. I think it's a good take. I think the first five levels of your aspect should be normal experience in this dungeon. After that, it should be significantly reduced. Because I look at this as a very good way to, be a, to go from new to journeyman in Outlands without having to worry about the disruption of thieves and reds. I do. And I like the idea of giving players who don't want to deal with Thieves and Reds a home on Outlands. My wife would love this dungeon concept because she would actually play probably more. Um, she doesn't like dealing with a lot of the murders. That's why you don't see Frosty on a lot. I don't mind it. I get upset about it. I get really upset about it. Y'all have seen me get really upset about it. But at the end of the day, I fucking love the game. Um... But I, I think having a way to level up skills, so if you want to level up Majory and you don't... If you're the kind of player who doesn't like macroing in a corner overnight, this would be the dungeon for you. You can still fight hard, challenging mobs and level up your skills. And if they gave bonus experience, so if they gave like 1.5 experience, so let's say if it's an 800 gold... Uh, monster, and you would get like tw what twenty aspect experience for that, or something like that. Um, whatever it was, whatever the the thing is, maybe you get thirty aspect experience or thirty five aspect experience instead of twenty. If your aspect is let's say between zero and five, and that'll give you a good way to at least get a couple of those initial uh, aspect levels going to help you out. I mean, it would suck if that, you know, if it's SSC week for that. I mean, like, have fun sweating it out, buddy. But um, <laughs> on a zero-tier aspect if you're a new player. But, hey, I mean, like, them's the dice. Um, But I, overall, I actually really like this. I think I think this is a very good idea. This is this is good stuff. So, like I said, I, I disagree with Pwn. But overall, generally, I think me and him both agree this is a really good idea. Um... And I, I think this will add a lot more inclusion to it without breaking the game, um, specifically because of the uh, of this right here. Um. So then we've got. I think this talks about the murders and how you can't do bad things and how it doesn't fuck you if you've got a guild favor that you just popped and then the weeklies happen. Although I have to admit, it. I'm gonna say it. If your guild popped a guild favor on fucking Thursday, you deserve to lose your guild favor. What were you thinking popping guild favors on a Thursday? <laughs> you know there's going to be a new meta for popping a shitload of guild favors on a Thursday just to see if you can gamble a little bit, if your guild happened to be active, just to see if you can gamble and get your guild favors back because it became the Sanctuary Dungeon. 
There will be a meta of people who gamble for this. I guarantee you it will happen. Come on, man. Pop the five favors, dude. What if it's Sanctuary next week? We'll go to fucking back. Let's do Sarah right now. Let's go. <laughs> the fucking gambling meta. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Let, let's, di let's dive into this. Murder and penalties. Um... All right, so we'll be removing the existing murder penalty system that scales resurrection fees and dungeon restrictions based off the dungeon level in which victims are killed. Updating um, handling for murders now as followers, which I don't understand what it is currently, so help me out. Um, because as you all know, Sack of Potatoes was not able to get his five kills and become red. I kept dying as I tried to gank blues as a blue. I'm not very good at PvP and UO. <coughs> All right, uh, murder fees. When, <laughs> when a player commits a murder and is uh, reported for it, that player's uh, make sure. Okay, cool. I'm not covering it up with the camera. That player's murder fee uh, will default to a thousand gold. Okay, so you get a thousand gold added to your head per murder. Uh, however, uh, the victim will be able to report. Uh, However, if the victim is able to report the murder, uh, more than one player, more than one player for their murder, the murder fee will amount by an increase of two hundred fifty gold per additional player uh, beyond the first. Ah, so if I roll in with a duo and two people kill me. And I report both of them together, they both get 1,250 gold. Yeah, it's an additional 250 for rolling with an accomplish. So these eight man gank groups that we've been seeing would be math. I think that's 3,000 gold to kill. Um. Ah! An example, so I don't have to do this. A player is attacked by five different players in a dungeon and is killed, i.e. a murder and four accomplices. All murderers will have a murder fee of 1,000 plus four times 250 to equal 2,000 gold assigned to them. So you kill one person with a group of five, that is 10,000 gold per murder. Bruh. Bruh. No one will ever die on level one and level two of a dungeon ever again. Unless people are like diehard, filthy, fucking rich murderers. But I think the, the days of killing people just to say fuck you are over. I'll be honest, with the level four dungeon starting to come out, they may be leave some people alone on level three. I mean, let's face it. I mean, like... Uh, let's see here. A wilderness is now treated like a standard dungeon for the purpose of aggression restrictions and has no difference in handling compared to dungeons. I don't know if that's in relation to that. I probably is. Murder region restrictions. If a murderer dies in a, a punishable location, i.e. not gray zone or PvP event, they will have a region restriction placed on them for every region they commit a murder in during the last 60 minutes. Region restrictions prevent a player from committing aggressive action towards any blue in that area. Region restrictions now also prevent a player from committing beneficial actions towards any murderers uh, or criminals in the area as well. They can heal blue players and allies, however. So no longer can you have a blue bot healing you, healing your murderer. That's really nice. <clears throat> and if you die in a in an area, you can't come back in it for a, for 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 an hour. During all of these region restrictions, there will be a thir 30 minute plus 15 minute yeah, 15 minute per highest accomplished count based on the accomplished account of that's I'm going to have to watch a video and react to what that meant. Ah, an example. Bring it home, Luthius. Bring it home. Because everything else just fucking hurt my head there. The following actions occur within 60 minutes. 
Bling, bling. We need a law and order sound right there. Hold on, hold on. We got this. Worth. The player commits a murder by themselves in Palma. Then the player then commits a murder with two players in Wilderness. Then commits a murder with five other players at Ossuary. This player is then killed running into Darkmire. The player's highest accomplished count for any murder during the last 60 minutes is four people for the murder committed in Ossuary with five people. The player will now have an aggression restriction of 30 plus 15 times 4 for 90 minutes applied to Palma, Wilderness, and Ossuary. Someone better clip this, but I think that may be too punishing for Reds. I don't know. That sounds rough as fuck. Can you pay that off and just, like, jump back in the fucking action if you're rich as shit? Because, like, I'll be honest. That just sounds painful to listen to. I mean, 90, like, you, you, you kill. That's like you, you stab some dude in the back because you're angry with him. And then, like, okay. And then 50 minutes go by, and you roll down with the boys for five minutes. Yeah, number nine will wait 30 minutes now instead of 50. <laughs> but, like,. Dude, if you fucking commit some random crimes, let's say nine goes and kills one person in a dungeon, in three different dungeons, and then he rolls out with the boys for, like, right at the end. Or joins in on some kills, right? Or acts it... Or, ooh! I know how you can fuck over reds with this system. I know how you can fuck over res with this system. You could get a guild. Or a group of players. Like, I'm talking like eight motherfucking beef boys, right? All stealth archers. All reds. To go into a fucking dungeon and stealth next to one other person. A ninth player, so you're not botting. On their blue. Wait for a red to roll in and tag them. And then all other eight players kill their fucking friend. Fucking that one guy. Royally in the ass. I guarantee you Path would donate millions to a guild who did that for fun. The Bait Bot Guild. Ah! I bet we could get millions donated just to fucking do it. Log out and try again next day. What are you talking about? Log out and try again next day. That's why uh, that's why Owen gave us 15 accounts. Log out and then hit the next fucking bot. <laughs> All you need is stealth and archery and a fucking bow with five with like three arrows on it. <laughs> you only need to get the one shot off. That's why you bring nine of your friends. <laughs> it's. It <laughs> uh, the most expensive thing is going to be leveling up archery across 13 alts. <laughs> but could you imagine? 
you just wait until like that one dude's committed a crime against that guy, and then you fucking have your boys light up, light up your, light up the bro, and then you just fucking have them report everyone for a murder and just sit back and let this guy scream. At what what would that be? What would that be if you had um? Let's let's do this. If you had, let's say, if we rolled a ten man group, all right. If we rolled a ten man group on top of the actual murder, right? So the actual murder would be the eleventh person times uh two fifty. That doesn't seem that impactful. I don't know why. I in my head that sound is so much more expensive, and then I just fucking I don't know how I didn't do that math in my head. But that would still be 3,500 gold. 3,500 gold, but the fucking lockout is where you're at. That would be, uh... Where's the math for that? It'd be, what What was it? Fif 15 uh, times 10 uh, plus uh, 30. A three-hour lockout. Yeah. That's a three-hour lockout. But you also have to remember if he's if he's gone to like three other dungeons before them, or if it's a if it's a it's this will really fuck over a red duo. If a red duo rolls in after hitting like three dungeons and you pop that off with the fucking group, dude, just <laughs> oh man, yeah, I could see it. I I I, I could see it. I like it. Slain monsters, uh, when a, um, when a slain monster resur- uh, yeah, slain murder. When a slain murderer resurrects and pays their murder fee, the player that killed the murderer will receive anywhere from 20 to 50% randomized amount of the paid murder fee as gold directly in their bank. Previously, it was a flat 33%. Hmm. I'm thinking, hold on. I, I, I don't think I don't think there's a way to create like an infinite loop for gold on that. That would be pretty funny. Cause it would be uh No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it would be a thousand gold per individual person. Not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I was roughing it there in my head to see if there's a way to gimp that. I don't think there is. So yeah. I... All right. Here we go. Rebalances. Damage resistance. Players with uh, in tame summon creatures are now capable of a maximum of seventy five percent damage resistance on any individual damage received, unless specific uh, effect specifically reduces the damage. To the amount of like let's say one, which is like yeah, let's dance and stuff like that in the everything is discordance. The effect of discord uh the effectiveness of discordance effects on creatures will now scale to to be bards printed discordance divided by 120 of uh, percent of normal. Uh um if a uh, creature has multiple discordance effects in place on it for multiple bards. Players will receive the discordance effect of the player with the highest printed discordance skill. Um, successful chances and effect donations for discordance will continue to utilize a player's effective warding skills, i.e. the bonus from aspects and skills, blah, 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 blah. A example, a player has an effective warding skill of 130, but a printed discord of 90. If the player is the sole bard putting discord onto the creature. The barding effect of this creature will be 90 divided by 120, so 75% of normal. So the normal 25% discordance damage will be 18. What was it? 
I mean, that's my feedback to Luthius is what was the equation for this? I don't want to have to look this up. Please tell me what it used to be. Like a strikeout. Like it was this. Stricken. Now this. Bold. For example, just go to wildhead.com and look at any patch note for World of Warcraft or any Blizzard game or hell, anything Wildhead does. There was no equation. <laughs> it just fucking worked. It was 25%. Wait, what? Is this a nerf or is this a buff? I don't know if this is good or not. To be quite honest, I have no fucking clue what the before was. So I, I don't know if this is a good or not. Uh, parry finishers will now potentially trigger when a player is at 33% health or lower. Previously, this was 50%. It's a nerf if you don't use 120 disco. Uh, because it, the math used to divide by 100. The math always used to divide by 100 and not 120. Like all their equations. All their equations used to divide by 100 because 120 was better. Like 120 added, added beneficial to it. Or this is like a breaky. Or now they're saying 120. Wait, no, no, battle win. No, that just hit me. Now, in in order to use Discord as a normal ability, you have to have 120 of a skill, which means you don't even get the normalcy of an ability. That's the only ability in the game now, unless there's more bullshit below here. That means the normal fucking damage of the equation is not 100. It's supposed to be the break-off is 100, and 100 to 120 is an improvement of said ability. Not fucking getting to normal! That's ass fucking backwards! And here we were on an all-time high with the Sanctuary Dungeons. Son of a bitch, man. I hope I'm wrong on how I just read that, but I'm pretty fucking sure I'm right. At least 30% sure. And I'm pretty good at critting. Summon creatures. So if you're a solo bard with 80 disco, uh, because uh, you want to have 80 parry as well, you're fucked. Then you're fucked either way. Yeah, I mean, like, that was so needless, it's not even funny. It was so needless, it's not even funny. Uh, uh, summon creatures, uh, water elemental with, uh, an elemental rag special. Okay. Oh, the resistance has been increased to 33%. Again, didn't say what it was. Um, it's probably like 20 or some bullshit. Special something bullshit. Who, who cares? Who cares? No one's going to use this fucking pet. Earth Elemental, Earth Elemental and Ancient Mummy, Bleed and Disease has been reduced to 33%. Good. Uh, Stonewall, Summoner's Tome, Upgrade, now increases damage resistance by uh, 2.5 per tick, up to a maximum of 20% resistance, and now flex. What was it? What was it? Earth Pool Summoner Tome now has a maximum of... Again, what was it? Hit points for the Fallen Summon types have been adjusted for the fall, uh, for following... See, at least here they say what it was previous. I just don't know why they don't just put the previous stuff here too. I'm not like a fucking wizard at this game. Uh, Earth Elementals re uh, reduced to 500 was previous 600. That's good. I, I want to see the Earth Elemental nerfed into the fucking morale. I don't want to see it nerfed to the point where it can't be good for one mob. What I don't want to see anymore is the capability to use Earth Elementals to pull 40 fucking mobs. And then one person, and only one person, use their Earth Elementals to pull 10 plus mobs, and then use rotating AoE abilities to be able to nuke them down 
all while using Wither to resummon up free elementals to keep the fucking party going. And by party, I mean the one fucking mage. Yes, it's possible. It, it might That might be the dumbest shit I've ever seen ever. Like, the, the fact that a player can... The, a player is less tankier than an elemental. Baffles. Baffles, baffles, baffles. All right. Um, PvP mechanics. Uh, group damage tolerance. Since we uh, since we added traps, let's nerf summons. I mean, like, fuck, bro, dude. You had a problem way before the traps, and it won't even matter. It won't even matter because now with traps, you kill them equally as fast. It's like there's a scale of like how fast they were able to kill it, and then with traps, it went up to here. And now all you're doing is bringing it probably slightly higher than what it originally was. Because you don't need that many Earth Elementals because you're able to output more damage per second and kill the mobs faster and more efficient. Group damage tolerance. Once a player is, uh, has taken four sources of player-based damage within one second window... Each further player base damage occurs in that same window will have a cumulative penalty, ten percent penalty, applied to it up to a maximum amount uh, of ninety percent penalty. Damage coming from players who flag green. I mean, I get it. I get it. This is a stupid solution to... I don't know. I, I'm going to say this is a stupid solution, but they probably threw 50 things against the wall to try to figure out how to stop it. But... The problem with UO is groups are so are, are too strong. I agree. I 100% agree. They're still fried. But, like, there's no way to combat, like, bulk damage because you can't add additional hit points to to be able to be sustainable in in these types of situations. Like, if there were stats in UO, like strength, intellect, stamina, and if I could build a beefcake character at the trade-off of not being able to build a DPS character, but the beefcake character could take, I don't know, a fuck ton of fucking damage because I built them defensively to be able to take said damage... This would make sense, but because you cannot build tanky characters in this kind of a game, which is fine because I get it, it's meant to be done. The second you add like two to three fucking players, like you can immediately melt people. So this is kind of made to prevent like a shitload of stuff, but four fucking sources of damage, brah. I mean, like you take four fucking like flame strikes at once, you're dead. I think you can take four energy bolts at once and you're probably not going to be in good fucking shape. Now, equally, you could do that and then go one Mississippi and fire the fucking follow-up. Unless you've got your heel notched, which I doubt you will. Yeah. I I, I see what they're trying to do. I see what they're trying to introduce, and I see them tightening this over time. Um, let's face it, you're not gonna get this far in the fucking weeds before you die. Uh, con contested hamstring. I'm not gonna act like I'm an expert at this, but it seems like a silly uh a silly gate around. I would say like a a, a scaling problem in, in just in a twenty year old game. Tested hamstring during the hamstring mechanic is increased to five seconds when applied to players who flag arm. Uh, whatever. Magic resists skill. If a player is hit by a damaging spell cast by another player, they will recover X amount of their mana of the spell amount rounded down. If a player is hit, they will recover their mana cost of the spell. Why would they... Okay. If a player is hit by an area effect spell cast by another player, uh, the amount of mana recovered will be divided among the to 
total. Do you get mana back when you like when when I resist an incoming spell? Do I receive mana? It seems like a a weird fucking thing. I think, like, this part of the patch, though, so I'm not going to lie, guys. It's, like, shit that I just don't even understand in the game. Because this is all PvP, right? Yeah, these are PvP mechanics. Which I don't understand any of this, so I'm not going to read I'm I'm just not going to read it. For the sake of fucking time, I'm not going to read it. Factions, I've never touched factions, so I'm not going to read this. Um, I think, see, this is why I didn't read it. That would have taken me another 45 minutes to get through. So yeah, I think my overall notes, just to summarize, um, since I'm more of a PvE bitch when it comes to Outlands, is I really like what they did here. I absolutely love the spawn rate increase. Uh, I've just felt for a very long time, especially the, the more crowded the dungeons get, the shittier it feels to be in that dungeon because it's just not scary. Uh, so this will help. I think compound, uh, adding this, the faster respawn bonus on top of this, if it's additive, that would be amazing. It's going to feel really fun to play in those dungeons, a lot more hyper-paced. Um, Sanctuary concept, I absolutely love. Uh, on top of the uh, notes that I mentioned earlier, I would love to see instead of, which is a shelter, kind of a Tremel mechanic for a random dungeon per week, instead of seeing this right here with gold value of creatures and experience and loot is reduced to 50%, what I'd love to see is the loot and gold reduced by 50%. I like that. But what I'd love to see is if you're in an aspect, if you're in a single aspect, not a double aspect, a single aspect. So I'm both blood, blood and blood, armor, weapon, right? And that aspect is below, uh, let's say six, so zero through five. Um, I get... Instead of negative 50, I get, let's say, bonus um, 20% or something like that. Like, we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta recognize that the aspects for a brand new player, 0 through 5, is a shit experience to be in the game. You're really not getting anything out of your aspect. Um, only very few select things get a lot of credit for the first few levels of aspect. And this would help elevate people without being murdered left and right. Because let's face it, most builds, you're probably, probably still on level 2 of a dungeon between 0 and 5. Um, or you can make it to where if, if on your character you have no aspect over 5, then, like, entirely on the entire account, then you get that. I think that would be fair as fuck, too. I think if you have no aspect over, like, in tier 6 or higher, then I would say give double aspect experience on that dungeon. So that way, that gives the new players a place to go, uh, just to start getting their first aspect out the door. I will also say, and this is the thing that I mentioned earlier as well, for Sanctuary, um, I would love to see, like, the same equivalent of skill gains that you see in Shelter Island. I would love to see skill points applied to here as well, to the sanctuary dungeon as well to give new players a chance to go and farm dungeon level one and potentially dungeon level two monsters with high skill gains, even three if you can fucking survive it. But let's face it. Um, but I would love to see them get those skill gains, and I think that would be a really good spot for veteran players to go and and if they did not want to have to macro something all the way up because they like playing the game. Uh, to give them a place just to go and shoot the shit and have fun. So that's my take on the patch notes. Overall, I will say a good job. I'm not a big fan of the barding thing, but if it could be explained to me in a way that made it not feel like uh, being a uh, 100 disco is shit compared to 120, which should be an improvement. 100 to 120 should be an improvement in your equation. Maybe to redo your equation to slightly fucking alter it. I fucking don't know. It just didn't... The way it was worded, it could just be the way the sentence is worded. It just rubbed me the wrong way. Overall, two thumbs up. All right, I'm going to get back to Diablo.